The Bloomberg administration has spent $5 billion since 2002 investing in our bridge infrastructure, which is an incredible investment in the future of the city of New York. We have 786 bridges in New York City, and virtually all of them are in a state of good repair. That's a record that's the envy uh, of any other city uh, in the nation. And we are doing innovative treatments uh, in the construction of our, of our bridges. For example, the Willis Avenue Bridge, we constructed fully off-site. It took four years off-site in upstate New York. We then floated this bridge to its new home on the East River. And it was really an exciting moment in time to see the bridge float underneath the Brooklyn Bridge, which is one of our most iconic and oldest pieces of infrastructure. And this new bridge floating underneath it, it was just a really wonderful, wonderful day. The bridge is a $600 million investment, uh, really important to the 70,000 commuters that go across it each and every day. And the new bridge actually has important safety enhancements. It's a much straighter alignment, eliminates a lot of the curves that were in the old bridge, and also has new pedestrian walkways and bikeway. So it's a really multimodal investment that will continue to pay dividends for the city for years to come. In the summer of 2010, the New York City Department of Transportation moved the main span of the new Willis Avenue Bridge into position. The new bridge is already open to traffic, and the old bridge will be floating away in early 2011. Replacement of the Willis Avenue Bridge will involve minimal traffic disruption, but compare that to the rehabilitation they did in the early 1950s of the original Willis Avenue Bridge. They had to close it for well over a year to get it fixed up. The Willis Avenue Bridge carries over 70,000 vehicles each day between Spanish Harlem and the South Bronx, and the DOT wanted to avoid a lengthy closure while upgrading the bridge. The bridge, nearly a mile long, connects First Avenue and the FDR Drive in Manhattan with Bruckner Boulevard, Willis Avenue, and the Major Deegan Expressway in the Bronx. The most visible feature of the bridge is its swing span, which opens to allow the passage of tall vessels navigating the Harlem River. The new span is made of 1,800 tons of steel, held together by approximately 75,000 bolts. The approach spans use another 6,000 tons of structural steel, and the bridge is founded on 271 caissons. This project provided employment for more than 400 people from 2007 to 2010. Work will continue on the remaining parts of the new bridge through 2012. During this time, the existing bridge will be removed and the adjoining roadways will be restored. So I can take you back a quarter century ago when I was chief engineer of the New York City Department of Transportation and this bridge was in the intensive care unit. It was on life support. We weren't sure what was holding the traffic up. We had plates every inch of the bridge because the deck had corroded completely. We could barely pay attention to that bridge because we had bridges failing around us. The Brooklyn Bridge cable snapped, the diagonal stay cables killing a Japanese tourist. The underside of the elevated FDI drive collapsed, crushing the dentist in his car as he went by. We had a lot of patients in the intensive care unit. The Willis Avenue Bridge was one of them. Many of these bridges would go on, like the Brooklyn Bridge, for hundreds of years and probably a thousand years with the original steel if we would take care of it a proper way. Michael Bloomberg has been a strong supporter of bridge maintenance, but I worry about the future. I worry that uh, with cutbacks in, in state aid to cities and cutbacks in the city itself, itself, cutbacks from the federal government, that we may face a crisis in 2020, 2030. Someday down the future, we will pay if we don't maintain our bridges properly. Despite the efforts in the 1980s, the Willis Avenue Bridge was finally flagged as having succumbed to the effects of age and the daily strain of traffic. Maintenance and repairs would not be enough, and the bridge needed to be replaced. DOT first had to create designs for a new bridge, acquire property, complete environmental reviews, and secure funding. Fabrication of the main swing span started far from New York City, in the town of Eau Claire, Wisconsin. The bones of the bridge were then transported to Coimans, New York, just south of Albany. Back in New York City, the bridge's operating machinery and electrical equipment were installed on site. On July 12, 2010, the swing span was loaded onto barges and began a 135 nautical mile journey, passing beneath 14 bridges to arrive in New York Harbor in about 36 hours. On August 9th, using the power of the tides, the swing span was floated into its final position on new piers built in the Harlem River. 
The span opened to traffic in September, and the demolition of the existing bridge followed immediately thereafter. The new Willis Avenue Bridge will maintain a vital connection between Spanish Harlem and the South Bronx, providing a safe and secure means of transport between the boroughs into the next century. Years ago when we had to uh, rebuild a bridge, we had to rebuild a bridge in place, and that meant we had to disrupt the traffic. If we were opening up a deck because we were replacing the floor beams, we couldn't run traffic across it. Now, people are prefabricating everything. So we have many bridges. Before the Willis Avenue Bridge was rebuilt elsewhere, the Triborough Bridge actually used prefabricated panels to, to redo its deck. The Tappan Zee Bridge is using prefabricated uh, construction. So to see that uh, bridge actually literally pop up, it's seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, most of the time when you see a building built or a subway system put together, it takes years, decades to get that done. And this, that period of time was actually just telescoped down to one moment, uh, this exciting moment when we floated it into place and then attached the approach ramps. Another great benefit was the fact that no commuters were inconvenienced because we were able to keep that old bridge in place until the new one was, was actually secured. So it was a great moment in time. I can't say enough for our division of bridges. They're now currently working on the rehabilitation of the Brooklyn Bridge, which is a $508 million program to improve the approach ramps on the Manhattan side. And it's that kind of investment in the future of the city of New York that this administration under Mayor Bloomberg has, has uh, done so much uh, for. And uh, I think that's why we will continue to grow and thrive in the years ahead.